<laughs> I guess everybody's religious about something. <laughs> hey friends, I'm Itabe Elliot here. You already saw that clip uh, where I said, I guess everybody's religious about something. And I took that little clip as I was walking down the street and they had a Montreal Canadiens uh, emblem uh, engraved on their family stone in front of their house. And I just wanted to demonstrate how we're all religious about something. It might be our sports team, and you know, and and, and somebody will say, uh, Montreal Canadiens suck. And then, then we'll get really pissed off and say, fuck you, the Montreal Canadiens are the best team ever. And, and then they'll say, well, they haven't won a Stanley Cup in 50 years or something. I don't know if they have or not because they don't watch sports, but... And then the other person, you know, and then we get upset about this thing. So, so the other person's religious about the other team, and the person who's a Montreal Canadiens fan is religious about Montreal Canadiens, and they're the best. And what they're really saying is they're God. They're saying they're, this is my God, and this is who I propitiate to and try to please. And uh, and I and it, we're really just trying to validate a belief that this is the truth, and. And so it could be a sports team, or it could be that my dad is the, you know, if you're young or something, my dad's the best dad, and, you know, my mom's the best mom, or something like that. And then we, you know, as we're kids, we would fight and say, you know, no, my dad's the best, no, no, my dad's the best. You know, we all had these little squabbles as kids, right? And so it could be that, or it could be, uh, it could be anything. It could be about an actual religious belief, about... You know, you say Jesus is our savior or something like that, and then somebody says, "No, I don't think. I think Allah is the savior." You know what I mean? And and, uh, and then somebody comes along and, and says, "No, I don't think. Uh, I think you're God." You know, someone who's into New Age and and uh, says, "No, you're God." And oh, you know, you're you're you can only save yourself. And and I think that's actually true, but it can still be a, a religious belief, and it can be a dogma for us. Or it could be anything else. It could be our job. It could be believing that our family is the most important thing in the world. and Or our friends. I do anything for my friends. You know what I mean? And, and, and somebody uh, says something to our friend and then we get upset about it. And so really what, what being religious is all about is, is about a belief that something is important. That in a belief that... Um, something is able to be desecrated. And so if somebody says something about our friend and they say, that's my friend, and, um, you know, how could you say that to my friend or whatever? Or it could be a political party. You know, I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican or I'm a conservative or I'm a liberal. and Or I'm an alternative, what an independent or something like that. But really all of these things are pointing to the outside. And what I want to hopefully invite people to do is to start looking within. And and what does that really mean, to look within? You know, with, a lot of people talking about spirituality say this, you know, the truth is to be found within, or know thyself. But what does that actually mean? And I want to give you a few clues to what that actually means and how you can find out for yourself because I can't tell you what that means. You have to discover it for yourself. And the way you can do that is through some type of contemplation practice like meditation or mindfulness. Um, And the way you do that is through feeling. And a lot of times we get caught up in feeling and we say, oh, I'm, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling like like you really mean this, and I'm you, you hurt my feelings, and really that is uh, an ignorant view of of what the term actually means. Feeling means sensation, it means you know a, a physical sensation um, or an energetic sensation, and <laughs> an emotion is really just a sensation or a belief that we've identified with as ours and mine and and right. And so the way we can use feeling, actual feeling, to get to a deeper truth and start to know who we really are and and maybe also who we're not is by using sensation and our senses, coming to our senses, as Alan Watts says. 
and actually experiencing the world for what it really is instead of projecting beliefs and our dogma, our personal religion about what the world is onto every, everything we experience and everybody we interact with. So what we can do is, let's just go through the senses. So we'll, we'll start with feeling. Um, when you're experiencing, say you're walking down the street, um, experience the feeling of your body walking. And you can even say walking so that your mind gets focused on what you're doing. And you use walking as a bit of a mantra. You say, walking, walking. But you're not just saying that as a rote thing that, okay, I'm walking, I'm walking. Who cares, right? But it's all about bringing your awareness and your attention to how, you're, how it feels to walk. And what does your body feel like inside as you're walking? So you might feel, you know, your pants brushing against your legs as you walk, or your your sweater or your shirt brushing against your arms, or your clothing moving a little bit, or the wind on your face as you're walking. Um, and then there's another level of that, and you can actually feel the inside of your body, like Eckhart Tolle talks about. He says um, to hold up a finger and and feel the inside the aliveness inside of your finger. So you close your eyes and you feel just the tip of your finger, like this this part of your finger, and you just feel the inside of it. And you wait until you feel something. You might feel tingling or you might feel um, pressure, or you might feel warmness or something like that. And once you feel that, you open your whole hand and you try to feel your whole hand. And you, um, so you, Feel, what does it feel like to feel my whole hand? And you, you establish that feeling, that sensation. That's mindfulness of the feeling of your hand. And that's how we practice mindfulness throughout the body. You just bring your awareness to certain areas of the body and what you're doing with the body in, in this certain way. And what that does is it keeps the mind focused in the reality of this moment. And it keeps us free from creating mental stories and going off and having mental fairy tales and movies in our mind and creating dramas. Because when we have dramas going on in our mind, we're going to have dramas going on in our life. And we'll just it'll just be a matter of time when someone comes along to fulfill the self-fulfilling prophecy that's been happening in our mind. So we had this story going on about our husband or about our wife all day long. And when they got home, we had a big fight with them. And it's, the, the fight wasn't about what was happening in that moment. It was about the drama that we've been creating all day long, or all month long, or all year long, or however long. And then all of a sudden, the, the circumstances, the external circumstances, matched what drama was already happening inside. So if we keep ourselves within, and we keep our attention within the body as, as we're living our life, and you can use feeling and just feel whatever you're doing. If you're washing the dishes, just say washing the dishes and feel, experience washing the dishes as you're doing it. And sorry, um, and so you can use uh, sight as you're seeing. Just see color, shape, and form. And instead of labeling it, that's a tree, that's a car, that's an ugly car. That's a beautiful woman. That's an ugly woman. That's a fat woman. That's a skinny woman. That's an ugly man. That's a, an attractive man. Just see color, shape, and form. And the way you do that is is you just see, you just label it seeing, seeing. And you, and you get back to a more basic form of perception instead of labeling it as a certain object. So... Um, those are two senses you can use. You can also become aware of the feeling of, of breath coming in and out of your nose. You can also become aware of taste as you're eating your food. Tasting, tasting, and really taste because there's so much more taste going on than we normally realize. And we would actually enjoy our food a lot more and probably eat a lot less and be healthier because we'd realize that, wow, this food is really, really sweet. It's actually intolerably sweet and we might choose foods that are a little more neutral and then and choose healthier foods um, so 
these are a few ways you can use mindfulness to improve your ability to stay in the present moment and not be so religious about life and and uh, and our experiences and not and not allow them to create a self or allow us to create a self out of it um, because we become religious about things and dogmatic about things when we create a self when we start to say this is my belief it's my truth um, that's my husband or my friend that you said that to or you did that to um, that's my car that you scratched any of these kind of things and we create suffering and the suffering is only created when we create a self and because really everything is just an experience and when we project some type of self on it um, when we believe it's ours or us then we suffer so just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how we become religious and dogmatic about things we believe to be ours and and hopefully talk a little bit about how we can step outside of religious dogmatic belief and and actually come back into the body and experience a greater deeper truth so that we can be at peace and not have to fight so much with ourselves and others so i love you have a wonderful day and peace out yeah. like i said everybody's religious about something